It's always fun for me to find a kindred spirit in the plant world, someone who understands the deep restorative power of plants that goes way far beyond just a mere aesthetic, someone who knows that plants truly can make people happy and help us grow joy in our lives. I found a new friend in Perla Sofia Curbelo Santiago, otherwise known as AgroChic Online. She's a bilingual gardener with a certification in horticultural therapy helping people connect to plants in a deeper way. And today, as we are in the midst of winter, at least if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, maybe we're going a little stir crazy. Maybe we got the winter blues. This episode is all about how to heal that with some simple and affordable projects that you can do with yourself, with others, and with your plants to help you continue to grow joy and add a little more verdura into your life. Welcome to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives by doing so. I'm Maria, former plant killer turned happy plant lady, author of Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, your new best plant friend. On Growing Joy with Plants, you'll find conversations about houseplant care, gardening tutorials, and wellness through the lens of plants. Hi, plant friends. Welcome back to Growing Joy with Plants. I'm Maria, your planty friend, your new best plant friend. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that I get to help you grow joy with plants. And if you're old here, if you're a returning listener, so honored and thrilled that you return to this podcast to continue growing more joy in your life. So before we dive into this episode, I just wanted to make sure that you guys know, and if you're just a podcast listener, stay subscribed to the podcast and just ignore this. But if you like YouTube, if you watch plant stuff on YouTube, as well as listening to podcasts, we have completely reinvented, kind of rebranded my YouTube channel this year, Growing Joy with Maria. It's got amazing videos and tutorials that are either supplemental for the podcast episodes, like we have a visual episode on alocasia and on ficus in partnership with the episodes that we do on this podcast. But also I'm just doing completely other stuff. So aligned with this episode on plant projects that bring you joy, there's a Kokodama workshop. I also have a repotting tutorial, right? I have all sorts of stuff on the YouTube channel. So if you like PlantTube, if you like YouTube, go check me out and subscribe. I'm so excited to welcome Perla Sofia Curbelo Santiago, I freaking love her name, founder of AgroChic and author of Verdura, Living a Garden Life. It's her new book that celebrates planty projects that help you cultivate passion for plants and for your own life. And we have a really beautiful conversation today about the benefits of horticultural therapy, why gardening is in fact therapeutic and healthy for your body. And she walks us through some easy plant projects that you can do while we're cooped up this winter. Because I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little cooped up in the woods with it constantly snowing. And I want to get my hands in the dirt or my feet in the dirt, which you will learn more about later in this conversation. But I hope you enjoy the projects that we go over and let me know on socials at Growing Joy with Maria what projects you might end up doing at home after you're inspired by this episode. So without further ado, here's Perla. Perla Sofia Curbelo Santiago, welcome to Growing Joy. (laughs) I think you win most beautiful name of any guest in all, all of our 200 some episodes. Thank you so much, Maria. It's so nice to finally talk to you mm-hmm. because, you know, I feel like I know you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very sweet. Me too. Like the minute your face, you know, you popped up in our digital recording studio, I was like, oh my gosh, I've seen her face on Instagram so much. It's always so fun to connect with people that you follow. Obviously, I know your amazing history of your journey to becoming the horticultural therapist that you are. But for the listeners who are lucky enough to be getting introduced to you today, can you share your journey of how you became the amazing Puerto Rican plant lady that you are today? Thank you so much. Those kind words, definitely. Well, first of all, I'm a professional garden communicator that happens to have a horticultural therapy certification that I did a few years ago with the Chicago Botanic Garden. And Gardening, loving plants, and gardens in general, it is something that has been with me since I was a kid. 
always remember going through the neighborhood looking for plants, especially for roses to cut and bring back home, oh. especially to do a book, little bouquets to put in my in my room. And that is something that until this day I do. I have my garden, first of all, because I want to be able to cut flowers and do bouquets for myself. And of course, having a backyard growing up to play in, I grew up in the 80s. So definitely it was like, go outside and play, go to the backyard with your friends or your or your siblings and play. Or And then when you are older enough, you know, go around the neighborhood a little bit further and further. So yeah, and, and of course, being in as part of an organization nowadays as Garden Communicators International makes you mingle with authors, with editors, and the potential to become an an author, a published author, it is higher. So um, this is, it's never a straight line, but um, the big picture is that I always loved gardening, always has been in my world. And so once you know that it's something that you really like, that you're passionate to talk about it with someone else's, so you try to uh, focus on that. And that's what I did. I decided to dive into gardening and gardening communications. And so far, so good because it's the, the enthusiasm. You can transmit that to your friends, to your clients. And the more you share that, the more people want to work with you. Yeah. The majority of this episode is going to be about practices people can do to decrease their stress in the winter with plants. But you have a very unique career that I think a lot of listeners might be interested in learning more about so that they might be able to replicate it. You mentioned AgroChic. Can you tell us what AgroChic is when you started it and how you've grown it into the amazing website that got you this book deal and kind of has enabled you to build this really cool, unique speaking career? Well, AgroChic is a website in Spanish that is mostly about gardening uh, topics and wellness and, of course, urban agriculture. I started it almost, well, this year it turns 15 years. I wow. started like a blog. Yes, as a blog. Of course, when I started AgroChic, I started in social media, on Facebook. And it was when people were starting to put out there everything that they have, every single photos. And of course, they were opening these windows to their backyards, what they have. And I did the same. So you can see that people were like, oh, I have a banana tree in my backyard, a avocado or mangoes, things like that. At least in Puerto Rico, there's a lot of people. So that peak in social media, in, in what was starting at that point, helped me, you know, to launch the website, the blog. And then it turns out like you start writing about, okay, how can I teach people or at least meet with people who can teach others? And so I write about that. I started as a journalist. So I was interviewing other people and I was doing some gardening, but not as much as I have been doing it for the past seven or 10 years. So yeah, that's how AgroChic started. And it's, right now, it is focused for people who are looking to read stories in terms of how can I maximize my space? How can I use my what I got to relax, to start my day, so to feel more productive, things like that. And of course, because of everything I've been doing and all the collaboration that are coming up. And for the English speaker, I started doing a website called mygardenbreak.com. That is going to be a, everything in English. So yeah, that's been a, quite a journey. And AgroChic is fully Spanish. Your book that just came out, Verdura, Living the Garden Life, is in both Spanish and English. So when did you start adding... English to AgroChic or to your brand? Well, soon after I started to collaborate uh, through 
garden come to do workshops in English or participate in different panels. I was given AgroChic as if you read Spanish, you can go to AgroChic. But definitely it was something that I have to decide if, if I wanted to keep the Spanish content or do a mix. So I decided to keep it in Spanish. And then later on, when the opportunity happened, and that's when I decided to launch another website in English. So I don't have to, you know, sometimes you don't want to confuse people with your, the brand of Agrochic is publishing just in Spanish. And of course, when I do collaborations, I do them. If it's for a, a local client or is in Spanish, it's going to be in Spanish. But if it's something for the state, it's going to be in English, depending on the requirements. But um, I navigate both languages. So that's the great opportunity. And when the book came along, the opportunity of the book, it was first written in English to be translated into Spanish. So I have to do both things at the same time. Oh my gosh, what a brain you have. You also mentioned maximizing your space. You know, when I, as I was reading your book, it sounds like you live in an urban environment and you don't have acres of land to be doing all these garden projects. The thing that I liked about your book was that we're going to talk about today is some of the projects in your book you can do indoors if you have no outdoor space or if you have really minimal space. So what does your plant collection look like and what does your garden look like in your home and your space? You're right in terms of where do I live, that it is in an urban area. I live in a walk-up apartment building in the first floor. So I have access to a backyard and a, a little front yard, which it is like slash terrace slash balcony. Um, so most of my work, my gardening work and plants are in the backyard. I do have some plants, as you can see, in my office area slash book nook and this room that I use to be more creative, to concentrate, to meditate. So most of the things that I like to do is outdoors. I live in a tropical island, so most of the time I have gorgeous plants everywhere. Yeah, I'm lucky enough. Yes. And uh, I love to the flowering plants. So I do a lot of that outdoors. And of course, I have that with some vegetable garden in between the plants, you know, some tomatoes here, herbs plant over there. But um, I have a lot of fruit trees in containers. So most of my gardening collection, my plants collection, it is in containers because the soil in urban areas is so poor. So you have to amend the soil or you have to build up your bed or use the containers. So that's what I've been doing. And everything that it is in the book, it is done in my garden or indoors because not all the fairy projects feature in the in the book with plants are gardening related, but not necessarily you have to transplant something. So I have to maximize also not just the space, but also my resources, as many people has to do. So that was something that um, I was used to do. And of course, when they give you a specific budget for materials, things like that, you have to maximize that too. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the empty area of your pockets. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I think we're so lucky that we live in a day and age right now where there's all sorts of really fancy plants you can buy and grow lights and really beautiful artisanal pots that could bring you a lot of joy too, right? Like you can invest a lot of money into your garden very easily, joyfully and do that. But you can also enjoy the benefits of growing things and, and nature with one packet of seeds and a small modest bag of soil and a terracotta pot. And I feel like social media particularly makes a lot of gardening feel inaccessible to people. And, you know, a lot of people listening to the podcast, I myself started the podcast when I was living in a tiny apartment in New York City with toxic soil. Some of the most toxic soil of all New York City is exactly where I was living. You know, we had the tiniest balcony you could ever imagine. You couldn't even sit on it. 
but I was able to successfully grow stuff in a low maintenance way. I think that's really important. So why do you feel like whether you're approaching plants from an urban space with a little bit of outdoor space or whether you're living on a huge plot of land, why do you feel like people are so drawn to nature and drawn to plants right now? Around the world, and specifically in classical music, where I got my undergrad degree, the pitch of A is known to be centering and recalibrating. When I was researching stress relief and joy inspiration for my book, I was amazed at the impact that sound can have on our nervous systems. So no wonder I've been so in love with my Wind River wind chimes, and now I'm so excited to announce the launch of their meditation chimes, designed specifically to enrich your meditation or prayer practices indoors. The Wind River meditation chime, it comes in two sizes, are tuned to A, matching the longest and shortest tubes of their very popular Corinthian Bells 50. Those are the ones that I have and I can't stop talking about on this podcast. Each meditation chime is secured with a simple but elegant wooden base made out of oak, which has a mallet. It would look beautiful on a desk or on a bookshelf. With just one strike of the chime, the tones ring out for over a minute, giving you an opportunity to drop into the present with a big delicious breath to quiet your mind. Sound is a critical sensory experience, and for over 30 years, Wind River Chimes has been committed to inspiring the world with sounds that heal through their beauty and purity. Now you can experience the signature Wind River tone easily and meaningfully indoors. Enhance your yoga or spiritual spaces and ignite your meditation or devotional practice with the lasting inspiration of the Wind River Meditation Chime. Or you can grab yourself one of their famous wind chimes. I have two of them on either side of my house, and I'm completely obsessed. If you listen to this podcast, you know. And you can use code GROWINGJOY at windriverchimes.com to get a free engraving on any engravable wind chime to add a special element to your gift. So head on over to windriverchimes.com and use code GROWINGJOY at checkout. On an episode about joyful gardening, I had to mention a book about growing flowers. Both Perla and I talk about the joy of growing flowers, the joy of cutting bouquets for yourself or gifting bouquets, which I find even more joyful than cutting bouquets for myself. But you've got to know how to grow your own cut flowers in order to do that. And there is a new book on the circuit, The Cut Flower Handbook by professional flower farmer Lisa Ziegler. And it is the bouquet building Bible for gardeners. It's what you've been waiting for if you're interested in a cut flower gardening book. Lisa's unique approach and easy to follow advice on multi-season planting and harvesting uses the natural warm and cool weather cycles present in almost all growing regions to maximize cut flower production. And the book takes you from seed to harvest, everything you need to know. Also included in the cut flower handbook are 50 extensive flower profiles, planting tips, instructions, and images on how to pinch plants, how to make your cuts, how to dig a planting bed, and more. Plus, there's 200 photos of the best cut flowers for home gardeners to grow and advice on caring for your cutting garden. It's accessible to everyone on every level. The Cut Flower Handbook is your gorgeously illustrated, all-encompassing guide to growing your own cut flowers at home. I can speak from personal experience. My cut flowers are some of the most joyful aspects of my entire garden. Particularly, I'm a Cosmo girl and a Zinnia girl. Anyway, this book is available on February 27th, so you can pre-order it now online or in store. And if you're listening to this episode after February 27th, just go ahead and pick it up. Pick up the Cut Flower Handbook at your favorite local bookstore, bookshop.org, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon.com. That's the Cut Flower Handbook by Lisa Ziegler, wherever books are sold. Well, first of all, plants are, even though there are a lot of influence in terms of, oh, go ahead and get this beautiful plant or invest in this collector's plant, nature is still very accessible for many people and it's cost effective too. As you were mentioning, if you have this little packet of seeds and just one pot, you can start growing something from there. So you can start very small and focus on that. And that definitely is something that that little action can change your mood and of course, you start adding from there. But I would say it is because of the accessibility. Even though if you're not having enough space at home, maybe you can walk around the neighborhood and, you know, go ahead and, and have be surrounded by nature, go into a nearby park. If you live in New York City, for example, 
you can go to so many. First, Central Park. <laughs> Second of all, little pockets of greens. And when you're living in an urban area, that is something that we're going to start seeing more because there are more people living in, in urban areas. And of course, people need to go outside and breathe in fresh air, if we can still say that there's enough fresh air. But um, we need to see greenery. There's this innate desire and love for other natural beings. So that's biophilia, you know, that feeling of you want to be with other natural things. So I think that's why so many people, and of course, after the pandemic, people knew that they needed something green nearby to still, you know, that grow with them, to see progress in their eyes. And even the smallest plant can do that for people. So that's why nowadays people are more like, yeah, I want to do that. And we are seeing that also in the corporate world to that we were talking about that before they you start recording people are incorporating that in their workspace if they work in an office or they work at home they are incorporating more garden breaks things that are nature based yeah i think what i'm finding personally too is gosh we're so overstimulated with TikTok and Instagram and social media. And I'm coming back from spending five weeks with my parents with the TV always being on in the background. Like we're just so inundated with so much stuff. And I just find the more overwhelmed, overstimulated I get, the more I just want to like sit on my couch with my coffee and just look at a plant. I just feel like we're gardening, you know, you have to monotask, you have to just do one thing whether you're just sitting in the presence of nature or whether you're actually doing a task that requires focus that you can't be on your phone while you're doing these projects that we're talking about. I think that I'm craving more and more of that, of that simplicity that I think nature so naturally brings out in us because it is so simple. You mentioned corporate clients, and I know you do a lot of work with bringing nature and well-being into the workday, into the work environment. Do you have any interesting success stories from working with different clients that you've had around bringing plants into their life? Of course, I have successes and also setbacks. <laughs> okay. I have both. But in terms of things that you say, oh, the client got it. This person gets it. I currently work with a hardware store here in Puerto Rico and for the past three years, now we're going into our fourth season, we've been doing this, transforming a person's backyard or little nook into this beautiful green space. And uh, we, we have been doing that using the principle of the well-being through nature. I have been bringing the knowledge that I have acquired through getting my, my certification in horticultural therapy. So the client understood immediately of the importance of transforming someone's space. And we did this through a, a raffle, through a, a contest on social media. So they understood when I was explaining to them and of course with information that validate what I was, you know, the idea, the concept of when you have an environment that you like, that you feel relaxed, you can be more creative, you can think better. And of course, it was easier also for a company that sells hardware things, uh, plants, they have a gardening department. So to see how to incorporate their own products there, because if people feel better, they and they transform this area or this area of their home is transformed with greenery, they are going to come back to the store to get more areas of their home transformed because you don't want to feel great in just a corner of your home. Yes. You want to feel great everywhere, you know, indoors and outdoors. So that for me, I can say it's a great success because the client understood from the very beginning the importance of creating a space based on the person's needs, because of, again, people participate in this contest. And once the person is, they share the spaces they want to transform. And once the person is selected, we do this uh, assessment of the 
people's needs. Who is the person? What are the things that they like? So that information, I bring that back to the clients. And then from there, we start suggesting, okay, this could be a great idea to transform this person's space. They can use it for reading because it's a person that says that they really like a very tranquil space to read, to have their coffee in the morning or to walk around and, and see their growing trees, things like that. But it's always based on the persons and then becomes the products. And that for me, I could say it is the best story that I could share with you and your audience that when the client gets you know, the importance of nature for the well-being of the person. Definitely, it is something uh, magnificent. So what were the spaces that you've designed for those winners? You said you've done it four times. Can you run us down the different, not the winners, like specific names, but what was their desire? And then what did you create for them? Yes. Again, this is something yeah, because I'm not a, a designer, a garden designer, but I have, I, I could definitely share with uh, with them things that have worked with me and of course with uh, other people's experience and then we we bring it into their consideration. Uh, for example, last year, the winner, she had this little patch in the backyard and one of the things that she was telling us in the assessment uh, process was that she wanted a space that she can walk up in the morning have a space to meditate, looking into greenery and a space that she can share to have a coffee with her husband. And of course, one of the immediate things that we did was that we bring in a patio sofa, patio furniture to put around. We integrated, we added a bird bath and some flowering trees near an area that she had um, a lot of windows, you know, so when she was indoors, she can see outdoors and see the, the change and the greenery right in her window, but also the patio furniture. So it was inviting, even more inviting for her and her husband to go outside and use the space. And of course, to bring in their kids to use more of the space as a space for conversation and as we all want, we want a space for our own private time, but also to be social, to feel that is even if it's outdoors, it has a breathe. So that is one of the things that we did last year. And of course, uh, an area she wanted also an area like a corner with a, a Buddha. She had a, a figure of a Buddha. So first she had the Buddha on the floor. So we raised the Buddha on a stand and we put some bamboo plants around it. So we make it as a focal point. It was so nice. It was something that it was done in one day. That's also the limitations that we have. Um, you have to have the space clean and organized, painted. And of course, we bring in the furniture and the plants and the containers. So the transformation is right away. Sounds like it could be a TV show. <laughs> yes, Verduda. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We all see the, we have a hang on on TV shows of transformation spaces. And we love that. And we love how we can change the space just with one plant. And that's the amazing thing of nature. Just one plant can transform everything for you. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Let's do that show together. Let's do that show together <laughs> in English and Spanish. That sounds great. Who wants to buy that show? <laughs> and some Italian in there. Yeah, and some Italian <laughs> too. Perfect. Yeah, in 2023, hands down, like two of the best things that I did to cultivate joy was bird feeder, which you mentioned you did a bird bath. Bird feeder, amazing. Like I have a view out of my window with my office and I put a bird feeder right there. And then also wind chimes because it's just been nice to hear the melodious wind chimes often. That's not even planty, but it's pollinator friendly. So anyway. Yes, definitely. And bird feeding is something that I took very seriously last year because I did it sometime, but I just had a bird bath, that's it. But when I added the bird feeder to my routine, it was amazing because it also helped me in my grieving process of losing my dog last year because I used to bird feed 
and then feed my dog. So when um, he passed last November, I was like, thankfully, I had the routine of birth feed because that would be this void in that routine and would be more difficult. And I'm still grieving, of course, but um, the birth made a difference. So again, this is an example of how nature can help you change your mood, heal you, and of course, console you when you most needed it. And it's part, as you are mentioning, birds are pollinators too, and we need them. And it's the result of us gardening, because I do the bird feeding because I garden. I have the tree that they come by and enjoy the bird bath and, of course, the feeding. So everything is connected. Everything is connected. And I'm sure your puppy comes back and visits via one of the birds, you know, to come check in on you. I very much believe in that. I'd love to talk about some concepts in your book. I loved that your concept of gardening for your 13-year-old self, as I've done a lot of inner child work last year. I think that's very interesting. In my book, I write about how, you know, when we were kids, we used to make mud pies. We used to play in the mud. And like, I used to make these feasts, these like fictional feasts with my friend. And, you know, we just like make these weird mud things and collect berries and just like make this feast on a rock. And I feel like for me, part of playing with plants and like repotting and just getting my hands in soil is reconnecting with that little version of myself who just loved getting dirt under her fingernails. So can you talk about why you decided to include an actual activity in your book based on that reconnection? Of course, I'm glad you like that project. And I think it it is an extension. I don't know if you have been asked before, what would you say to your 18 year old, 20 year old, your younger self. Your younger yeah. self. Mm-hmm. So when I was 13, I thought I was, you know, an adult, almost going 30. Yes. And of course, now, long years gap between being 13 and, and now I'm, I'm 49. And you start asking yourself what that 13 year old you still have in you. And I have a lot, let me tell you, things that I thought. It, the, that I wanted to get rid of, it turns out it is the parts that I wanted to keep. Be adventurous, going outdoors. And that's why I enjoy so much being outdoors in, in my backyard. And of course, nowadays, you when you look back at the movies, the music, the colors, everything that you like, Right now, it is based on what was going on when you were growing up. So I was growing up in the 80s. So these movies like The Goonies were, you know, out there and Indiana Jones, things like that. So you wanted to incorporate that into your life. And I remember going into patios, other people's patios, and the bigger, the better, the messier, the better like it was an adventure. So my garden right now, even though it is organized in certain areas, there are areas that are a little wild. And that is something that it was influenced by the 13-year-old girl. And of course, having stepdaughters that I saw them grow up and go through that stage and working with facilitators that work with teenagers and you to try to help them, you know, to put together workshop that can work for teenagers based on your life experiences, but also your knowledge. And of course, as recently as two years ago that I started working with Kids Gardening, the Kids Gardening Organization. So again, you have that youth around you and you start when when you're working with someone else's or with other groups that are working with youth, you start um, thinking about your own youth. How was it? So that was one of the reasons that I wanted to include a project to pay homage to that teenager, that 13 year old in me. And it was a fun thing to do. It was something you you have to reflect a lot. and, And of course, to think about everything. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it strikes on you and I both love, I believe her name is Florence Williams. She's the author of the book, The Nature Fix, which was a big book for me and my research for Growing Joy. I think it was for you as well. And something that she has really leaned into even after The Nature Fix is this concept of awe. 
and how reinvigorating awe in us as an adult is so important because when you're kids, you're in awe all the time. Everything is amazing. Everything is awesome. You know, the baby who who looks at everything like it's the most incredible thing ever. And we have to reconnect with that. And for lack of a better nature pun, that side of ourselves that even allows ourselves to be vulnerable enough to access awe goes dormant when you get older. And all of a sudden, you have to feel like you have to be a quote unquote grown up. And the ability to just kind of allow yourself to reconnect and think about, okay, when I was 13, or or pick an age, whether it was 13 or seven, or you know, whatever age that you felt the most special, the most you the most unchanged by society, because as we grow up, society just like beats the shit out of us, you know, and make a plant, you know, make a little potted garden inspired by that side of yourself. I just think we all need to reconnect with that a little bit more, you know? Yes. And thinking about that. And of course, I have to be very clear. I know not every teenager has a pleasant upbringing. And this is why as an adult, it's so much important that you are committed through your community, through organizations that work for the well-being of kids. Um, So to try to help those that are not that fortunate enough to have a good environment. And this is why I, I really love working with Kids Gardening, because they make sure that more kids and it have that connection with nature because I did have that growing up and doing something like that as the project that I feature in the book. It is think about your your favorite colors back then, what was going on on movies, um, what were the things that you were reading, what was the biggest TV show, things like that. And I remember when I was 13, I think the movie of Tom Cruise, Top Gun, was on. And I remember one scene that he goes and he was playing volleyball and then he goes to the Charlie's apartment and there's the patio furniture, a white patio furniture. I don't know what was the material. I don't remember. But I remember watching that and I had something like that in my bedroom, Mm, you know, like I love it like that. And yeah. because I, I saw it on the movie and I was like, oh, I want something like that on my room. Because I back then I thought of my room like it was the place. I loved spend time, spending time there, reading, talking to myself, creating things. Yeah. So that was me back then. <laughs> it's funny. I, re- I just rewatched the entire series of Gilmore Girls, which was a show that I yes. loved as a kid. And I was Rory's age, the daughter's age when I was watching the show. And then now I'm Lorelai's age. And so I'm rewatching the show kind of through the mother's eyes. And it was really funny rewatching the series now, seeing so many, so many references to killing plants, like both girls, they're plant killers, and they can't keep a plant alive. And there's a scene where they're trying to plant tulip bulbs. And there's another scene about another plant that they've killed. And I was like, wow, I wonder if this kind of imprinted on me because... I spent most of my teenage and adult years thinking I was a plant killer. And so I was like, wow, I wonder if like on some sort of subconscious level, I just associated myself with that. But anyway, yeah, I think that's so interesting and cool. I want to talk about a couple. So your book, Verdura, Living a Garden Life, available in both Spanish and English, is 30 projects that you can do to grow joy, to cultivate joy in your life. Yes, definitely. I love that there are some outdoor projects, there are indoor projects, all the projects are super accessible. I need to ask you about the barefoot garden. And I would love for you to walk us through how to make a barefoot garden because I'm so obsessed with this concept as someone who loves grounding, loves earthing. But right now, as I'm interviewing you, we just got six inches of snow outside. There is no way I'm putting my bare feet on the ground for the foreseeable future. And I just think this is the coolest idea. I've never seen it before. So can you walk us through your barefoot garden project? Oh, of course. It was something that I I wanted to do because I love walking shoeless in, around my garden, even though, you know, it is very important. And I, I make this clear that you protect your feet when you're gardening, of course, and try to not 
watering your plants while you're barefoot, just in case it is slippery. But uh, I love that. I love grounding. That is one of the things that I do every mo morning. And of course, because I have a garden, a backyard, I can do that most of the time. But I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people, and as you were mentioning, are living in apartment buildings in places that is not that accessible, or maybe it is snowing and there's no way they, they can walk barefoot, uh, bare feet. So one of the things that I did was I had this bonsai pot, you know, it is shallow. So I was like, oh, this could be fun just to put your feet on. That's it. It is not something that you're going to stand the whole time there, but that will, of course, that will depend where you put that, that um, project. One sec. So for those listening who can't picture it, it's a bonsai pot that's very wide and very shallow. So wide enough that you could put both your feet on top of it, just so you know, you have the appropriate picture in your head. So one of the things that I did was to incorporate plants that if you touch them, even if you rose them with the sole of your feet, you know, are fragrant. So I use thyme, lemon thyme, but you can use creeping thyme and other kind of herbs. Because again, it's not something that you need to be walking around just to stand on it or rose them with your feet, touch them with your feet. And then what I did was to add a stepping stone in the center to have something that you can stand in while you are using the other foot. And also, I, I wanted to do this kind of project so people to show people that if you have someone who, who has mobility problems and sometimes it's very difficult for them to go outside or, you know, to stand up and walk around. This is something that you can do to bring nature in. And nowadays, again, if you can walk, definitely you can go anywhere and that is not that cold. But if you're someone who are struggling with mobility, you are dependent on someone else's uh, to move. So if you're able to bring something like this, sit the person and put their feet on this kind of project, that is something that it will help, you know, stimulate them, their senses, the, 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 the sense of touch, and of course, the fragrance that, uh, that emanates when, uh, when you touch it, that is also going to help, you know, to release a, the other in a good sensation. That's the outcome. So this is something that it was based on my childhood. Again, as something that I still do as a grown up, and also something that you can adjust depending on the season you are in, but also your life circumstances, either for you or for someone else's. That um, sometimes you you forget that there's people who can move around and this is a, a great way to bring nature closer. Yeah, to have that feeling of, you know, the grass in between your toes is the best feeling and to be able to kind of recreate that in this little bowl, time in between your toes, I just thought was so clever. Yes, and again, you can use whatever the plants you like. But again, there's people who doesn't like time. So there a lot of other uh, fragrant plants that you can use or maybe culinary plants, things like that. And of course, you use that pot. Once you use that pot, depending on the plant's requirement, to, you take them back to the back jar if it's a plant that needs to be outdoors and it receives uh, sun the whole day. But then you can bring it. It, it is easier also to mobilize the, the pot so this is one of the things that, that are fun to do. And of course, if you have the space and you can do your whole back jar or a great part of your back jar, go ahead and do it with different plant materials and other um, materials that you have at hand. Yeah, I I could see my front lawn is mostly clover and moss. Mm -hmm. I would love to do a bowl like that with living moss. That could yes. be really beautiful too, because it would look so beautiful. Like my living room, it gets bright and direct light. I could keep the bowl on my, you know, living room coffee table. And then when I have my coffee in my morning on my living room couch, I could take the bowl on the floor, put my feet on the moss, and then just put it back up. And it's just my, you know, coffee table centerpiece exactly. that doubles as a barefoot garden. I think that's so fun. 
Exactly. And and again, those are the things that I gave myself permission to experiment. And you should do that. You, you should experiment. And there are going to be great things that are going to come out from that experience. And can you imagine, you know, going with your girlfriends to have pedicures and then come back and have some chatting and everybody is stepping on those right. kind of little <laughs> gardens. That is the social part also. Yeah, that's a fun story to tell. What about you have a miniature garden tutorial in your book? I also have a, a great YouTube video coming out on making your own terrariums, because I think that miniaturization, that creating this little world to escape into is so lovely, whether you're doing it in a terrarium the way I did, or whether you're just doing it in a pot the way you did. So what would your suggestions be for someone who might want to create a little miniature escape for themselves? Oh, there's so many opportunities. It is gardening. The only thing is that you are dealing with plants with different requirements. You have to take into consideration what are the plants need. You have to be more creative in terms of how are you going to use the plant for? Because the great thing is about miniature gardening is that you use certain plants with another purpose. For example, you can use a petunia plant in your miniature garden, but use it as a, if it were a flowering hedge. And, and maybe you can use a herb, a lavender herb, and you can trim it as in a tree, and then you can place it in your little miniature garden. So you are not using the plant as it is, you know, oh, this is a herb. You're using it as a tree, as a ground cover, as a little hedge or something else. So, but you're still dealing with life plants. So you have to be mindful about that and how you are combining that and what is going to be the maintenance. It's easier because there are no many plants. It, it is not a huge project, but then you can add other elements. You mention it if you are thinking about this little town that you feel like, okay, this fantasy of, oh, I'm in that little town, what should I do? So you uh, you probably use figurines, you use little cars or little dolls, things that maybe... That's the fun part, yeah. Yes, and uh, I love to collect miniature chairs. And when I'm, you know, creating the space, I then added the little shares, I added the table and you start recreating, you know, the story. I like to sketch first, not that I'm this big a sketcher, but uh, I, it is something that helps guide the idea. And then when I'm buying the plants or if it's a plant that I already have, I have an idea of how, how can I use it or what is the size exactly that I'm going to use. Nowadays, it's so easy to find small plants because our our growth are grown for miniature gardening. So there are plenty of things. And of course, if you don't have, I don't know, maybe you want to do something like this in your work environment, but you don't want to bring soil. There are so many other great things that you can do miniature gardening without soil, like using bricks. That famous brand that has the little bricks that you can create your botanical designs. So you can bring in and, and do miniature gardening without soil, without live plants, but you can create something that gives you the same sensation, you know, that can propel a good mood for you and, and others. Yeah, I'm obsessed with this terrarium workshop that I did for YouTube. I got preserved some preserved moss to kind of put as a, a cover for the scape. I did a gnome. My sister-in-law loves gnomes and she's a teacher. So I made this gnome fairy garden for her in a terrarium. And I've never had preserved moss before, but it's such a vibrant green that I made another little container for my desk. And I'm like, oh, I have a little bowl of crystals. Can I put a little bit of the moss in the bottom of the bowl and then put the crystals on top? Like just because it looks so beautiful and it's that dark green that just makes me happy by looking at it, you know? Yes. And you're more creative, again, because there are th so many things that you can try. And while you're doing it, you are trying things new. And, and maybe this work, maybe this doesn't work. But again, there is 
this ongoing process and you lose yourself in there. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of gardening, that you can lose yourself for 5, 15, 30 minutes, whatever the, the time you have. You can make up a lot of, of things while in there. And miniature gardening, doing terrariums, definitely is something that I encourage people to try because you can have it in a small space and still give you so much joy. And it is proven that even if you do 15, 30 minutes of gardening, that can last for a few days in your system. So the more you do gardening or spend time in nature, the more it is accumulative. And you said 15 minutes. It's not two hours. It's 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes. It's totally, totally accessible. So your book is so sweet. You're so sweet. And I, you know, you and I are definitely cut from the same cloth <laughs> with our life missions. So tell everyone a little bit more about your book and where they can find it and also where they can find you if people want to come follow. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for going through the book. I really, that definitely grows joy in me. Aww. Verdura in Spanish or in English, you can find it wherever you like to buy your books online or in person. If you are like to go like me, I love going <laughs> to bookstores and see what I can find. If they don't have it yet, ask the person that you are interested in the book and definitely they're going to get it for you so you can go back to the store. And of course, you can find me in agrochic.com. If you speak or, or like to read more in Spanish, you can go to agrochic.com. You can find me on Instagram as agro chic and of course on Facebook. So yeah, it's not hard to miss me. <laughs> yeah. And for our English speaking listeners, what is your English website? Oh yes, mygardenbreak.com. There you're going to find it's starting and uh, you're going to find some articles in English about how your garden, how gardening can do marvelous things for your well-being. So mygardenbreak.com, you can find me there too. Cool. But Verdura, living a garden life, it's so sweet. And, you know, as this episode comes out in mid-February, as we're all, you know, for us Northerners going through winter, we're cooped up. I definitely am interested. I'm going to start thrifting. I have a lot of thrift shops up here. I'm going to look for a good barefoot garden container because I don't have one. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for a good barefoot garden container. And hopefully in the next couple of months, I will have a barefoot garden assembled and I'll make sure to share with you on Instagram. Oh, please, please. Yes. Oh, 100%. So this was so fun. And congratulations on your book launch. And thank you for this beautiful discussion. And maybe we'll have you back to talk more horticultural therapy things in the future. Of course. Thank you so much, Maria. So it was very nice connecting with you. And yes, definitely we're going to see each other more. And I hope to have you on my podcast someday. So yeah. I would love it. I would love it. Thank you so much to Perla for this beautiful episode. Check her out, agrochic.com, mygardenbreak.com. She's so sweet. And check out her book, Verdura, Living a Garden Life. It was so fun to connect with her after following her on socials for so long. And I hope to have her back on the show in the future. Let me know on social media, Growing Joy with Maria, if you end up doing any of these projects. I am so excited to do the grounding garden. I cannot wait. I'm traveling this week as I record this and I plan on doing it when I get back. I'm on the hunt for the right container for that to make sure that it's big enough for my feet. But I just thought that was so clever and fun. I hope this episode inspires you to continue. Keep growing joy, my plant friends. Plant friend, thank you for tuning in today. It means so much to me that I get to be part of your planty journey. If you like what you heard, make sure you're subscribed to the show so you never miss an episode. We have so many incredible interviews and solo episodes on incredible houseplant and gardening topics that you will not want to miss this year. And while you're over there in the podcast player subscribing, why don't you click over to the review section of Growing Joy with Plants and leave us a review. Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so thanks in advance. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got so many options for you. First, I highly recommend you taking the plant parent personality test. 
It's free, it's super fun, it takes three minutes to complete. At the end of the test, you're gonna get your plant parent personality profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you and your lifestyle, inspired by your results. The links are in the show notes. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, I have so many free downloads on my website that I think could help you, like the Understanding Natural Light download or nine different ways to green up your office space. If you'd like to support the show monetarily and help me bring the show to as many people as possible for free, you can head to our Patreon link in the show notes to learn more about our offerings. And finally, I invite you to come hang out with me and continue the planty conversation on social media, on Instagram and TikTok. I'm growing joy with Maria. My DMs are always open if you have requests for topics or ideas for the show. Thank you again for listening. It is truly my honor and delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy.